podcast number 13 with Lindsay and Jill, my favorite friend knitters from Illinois. See, not only have you become guests not, and co-hosts, but your favorite friend knitters too. Ooh, FFN. Woo! I do. <laughs> what was that, Lindsay? I said she loves an acronym. Well, yes. Who doesn't? I'm going to tell everybody, we, I got back from Ogden this weekend, and I'm going to give another plug for the retreat coming up the first weekend in October. I had a good time, went to the hotel where the retreat's going to be. The rooms are very nice. There's all kinds of fantastic restaurants downtown. Went to the local yarn store, spent a bunch of money, loved it, had lunch with the, quote, knitting coordinator. I'm like, how did you land that job, right? That's like my dream job. Well, this yeah. is my dream job because I don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> anyway, she was super, super nice. We're going to have a blast. We're having yarn store party where they close the yarn store just for us. It's going to be super fun. So I link read- down below. People want to register for the retreat. It's October 3rd through 6th. I think that's right. Check it out. I can't wait to meet everybody. It's going to be so fun to meet everybody, it including was. you. Right, right. So what, how was your weekend? Mine was good. I went to a wedding yeah. and got to see one of my best friends and yeah. Cool. That's always yeah. good to reconnect with people. Yeah. I hadn't seen her since October. So. so. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. We talk pretty often, but it's nice to see people in person. So. Jill, what'd you do this weekend? Uh, this weekend you was knit. pretty uneventful. I knit and took care of my husband. So, um, sickly, yeah. Oh, oh, he he told me he had to go and have a sinus procedure done. He just had a procedure done, like, okay. And he told me the date, and I said, Oh, honey, you know, I've got a really big meeting that day, I can't reschedule this meeting. I said, That's okay, it's a procedure. Drop me off, come pick me up. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, no, well, so then. So the night before, I say, so what time do I need to take you there? And he said, well, I have to report at 6.30. And I thought, 6.30 a.m. for a procedure? That's kind of. And I said, well, where are we going? And he said, well, it's at the hospital. And so now I'm thinking, okay, is this, I was thinking like outpatient, quick, in and out thing. So it turns out he had a two and a half hour surgery scheduled with four separate procedures to be done on the face. Yeah. So this weekend was pretty quiet at our house. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, so you yeah. have a you didn't just drop him off at the curb and then come back later. <laughs> so, so no, so no, I didn't. I was leading a gathering of 25 people. It was a meeting I was in charge of and called for. It was the kickoff meeting that we always do. And, and, um, yeah, you can't just and, bail on that. And by the time I realized what's happening, cause it was until the, the, the nurse said, well, the anesthesiologist will be in. And so he starts talking and thinking, this is a wee bit bigger deal than what I had anticipated. Um, and so I am fortunate enough to have my parents in the same town. And so I called real quick and I stayed um, right until just about the time he was wheeled out. My folks came and I jetted back and it was hilarious. I got back to the recovery room five minutes before he got there. Oh, and I swear... Watch. Oh, so whatever. I mean, and he, he, and he knew I was leaving, but it was so funny. He came back and he opened his eyes. He goes, Oh, right where I left you. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, Not really, but oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right where I left you. So, but that you know what? Though that doesn't mean that you didn't leave. That just means you're standing where he left you. Yeah. So, so, funny. so that was, so that was kind of my weekend. Um, we did. But he's doing, he's doing all right, though. He's doing, he's doing well. Good, good. Yep. But, and so you had some, you know, hospital netting time as well. Yes, I had a little bit. The I um recently went on vacation with my family. So that was the big thing we've done between the last podcast and this one. So and yeah. knitted a lot of car knitting. Car knitting, new yarn stores, and I learned something new about stash and yarn purchasing. So we, um, we traveled to Glacier National Park in Montana and 
um, when we were there, I obviously looked up and found the local yarn shop and I was trying to figure out what to buy. I had this, I had this pile and I couldn't make any decisions. And I made the comment of, oh, um, if I bring all this home, it's probably too much to put in my stash. Thank you. Oh, Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> There's no such thing as too much to put in my stash. What the hell you say? She told me, she said, oh, honey, this isn't stash yarn. And I looked at her, she said, you're on vacation, right? I said, yeah. She goes, this is touring yarn. Touring yarn is completely different. That's funny. So, Until it arrives home and becomes assimilated. So I have, so I have, I, I brought home some touring yarn. This woman sounds like an enabler, and we gotta love that. Yeah. You wanna give a shout out to the yarn store you visited there? Yes, I would. It was. Oh, you're gonna share the yarn. I did. I brought the yarn if you wanna see it. Of course we do. And I will have to take a look because they make, so it is Knit in Needle, Knit in Needle Yarn Shop in Whitefish, Montana. And she was so kind, so kind. Well, and when I went, um, that they dye their own. They have a local dyer, and so probably 90% of the shop was locally dyed. I am, um, I loved the National Park and thought all the colors were beautiful and kind of told myself if I can find something that makes up the colors, that's, that's what I wanted to do so I could make a shawl and have a glacier shawl when I came back. Right, so the color palette of the scenery. Yes, right. yes. So that's what I intended to do. And she was a smart cookie because when I went in, she showed me this one, um, this one base and then I couldn't get it out of my head. <laughs> I know. But at her job, clearly. I know, but it captured the colors so beautifully. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of went a little bit overboard. It's so pretty. Isn't it pretty? I don't think she can see No, it. she can't. So. I'm oh, gonna... that's fantastic. Oh, and show us close up with the one of the labels, if you would. Oh my gosh, it was so cute. So, well, this one, because I love, so this is her label. Oh, polka dot, sheep, fine yarns. Yep. And this polka one, sheep .com. Okay. This one is called Depths. Oh, and the base is Iron Horse? Uh, the base is Iron Horse, which is 75% superwash merino and 25% silk. And is that a fingering or a DK or? <laughs> fingering and it has the most beautiful drape oh my gosh it has a so gorgeous gorgeous drape it's so soft. and she said they do a lot of shipping and it was so cool because i i it's like the green green of the trees and that was called moose meadow oh that's awesome yeah and the water oh my gosh the water there was gorgeous i've just never seen Never seen anything like it. So. Yeah. Dusty Road. Okay. Dusty Road. Winter Raven. This was really like the color of the sand and the, the rocks. Uh-huh. And the lakes. Um, and then when you looked off into the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. So really, it was just, it was. That's beautiful. lovely. So do you have your shawl in mind? Do you have a pattern in mind? I do now. I did not when I purchased. So I was looking and looking, and I think Second Avenue is going to be perfect. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it's called what? Second Avenue by Second who? Second Avenue um, by Amy Miller. Okay. Link yep. down below, as always. Yep. And uh, you know me, it's a rectangular shawl. And That's so you can wear it around your neck or you can wear it as a wrap. And how many colors? Do you have five colors there or six? I have five colors. That's going to be pretty. It's going to be really, really pretty. So I'm, I'm excited about that. And then I was vacillating because I got something else too. So I got sock yarn. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's, oh, it's got some speckles too. It's all of it. And, and all of it wrapped into one. That's awesome. Yeah. So I cannot make, wait to make socks. And then my daughter went with me um, and she did not. So this is her memento from the trip. Isn't that beautiful? With the pom-pom. And it's called Iceberg Tonal. Yep. And is that fingering going to be a fingering beanie? Yes. Okay. 
Yes, it will be. And do you have a pattern thought of for that? Um, I tend to knit one and then keep knitting the same thing. So maybe I'll need to branch out because I was thinking about doing the Tchaikovsky hat. Oh, you should do the Tchaikovsky it, hat. With, with the, I mean, it's such yeah. a subtle color change that you'll still be able to see the texture yeah, of it. Yeah, you should do that one. Or, yeah. or, well, maybe not with a pom-pom. I was going to say I would do a sock head hat. Yeah, but with the pom-pom. If you got to have the pom-pom, then maybe not. You've got to have the pom-pom. <laughs> she is, she or, is or you could do one of those ear flap hats. Oh, like a Despicable Me. Well, like, yeah. a, uh, like a Chulu or a Toque. Like the Peruvian, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was that was my big old purchase. And, and you had some windshield. You had a lot of car time on that trip. We did. We had a lot of car time. We did. A lot of togetherness. We had a lot of togetherness. We did 4,000 miles in 10 days. And I was really nervous about it at first. I thought, you know, but if you, if we had the chance to go again tomorrow, we, every single one of us would hop in the car and do That's it again. That's so great. That's, and the, you'll never forget that. Yeah. No. Nope. Cool. And you were knitting a sock on your trip, weren't you? It was Perseverance Sock. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's no longer sad sock. Yay. It is now the sock of adversity and triumph. <laughs> the sock of adversity and triumph. That's what you should name it on your Ravelry project page. <laughs> you totally should. Jill's sock of triumph. We, truly, because, well, you know, and, and even, even in our lovely Pearl Together group, I watch all these folks that post pictures of, look, I just tried my first pair of socks. You know, they just poofed out of the needles and suddenly yeah, they that's were there. Just you don't see them at home. You know, and it's like, look, this took me a week. And I have the same stinking sock that people have probably seen since the beginning of the podcast. Okay, here. but let's, let's, hang on. Let's reiterate what Lindsay just said. So you know, as well as I do, and as well as all of our viewers, that social media is what people want it to be. So people post, oh, this is my first shot, Shazam. It could have taken them six months to make that. You have no idea. And even if you look on the Ravelry page and it says they knitted in a week, people lie. I'm not saying anyone in our group does. That's not what no. I mean. But you can put whatever date you want on there. Like, who knows? People present whatever they want to on Facebook. You know that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, th I, and I think it's amazing. And I... I I feel like if I say that, I, was be I wasn't I was being no. um, judgmental. Well, no, 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 no. But, but, like but I know that you were feeling like it take this is taking forever. But you also know, and you and I have talked about this, that comparison is the thief of joy, right? It is. It is. I do it's need to tell you. It's your process that's unique to you. The story, though, because it was hilarious. I was down to the toe. I was like ready to do, yeah, I was at the toe. I was at the decreases for the toe. And I get out my directions again and I'm reading the decreases for the toe and it says, you know, look on the side where you did slip, slip, knit, and knit across the top of the sock. And I went and I'm like, that doesn't go across the top of the sock. Let me, let me read it again. I think I read it wrong. And I read it again and I looked at the sock again and thought, that's not where I had the slip, slip, knit. So then I decided to take out the sock which it always looked just a little off. A little off. But you know, you just kind of gloss over that. You just don't no, know. no, you don't. I, no. took out, I took out the other sock. <laughs> oh my, they looked, they, they looked nothing alike. Like nothing One of these alike. things is not like the other. <laughs> well, so what I figured out, because you know, when you're doing that, when you're doing the gusset, how it like decreases across uh -huh. the top. No, like one side decreased this way and the other side oh, was no. like decreasing the other way, like this wonky little, yeah. And then um, the other, the other issue I had was um, I didn't take very good notes. So learn. Um, and I did the heel flap based on your tutorial and then I couldn't find it the second one. So I oh, thought. No. First I off, thought, number two. Sock number two. Yeah, sock number one is awesome. It's just happy sock. It's been there for a long, long time. Um, so Wait what, for its friend. So I thought, oh, I've done this before. I'm just going to check a YouTube video on the nine-inch oh, no. really easy. So, so you just did some random heel? I did. 
said, no, not the heel, the heel flap. Yeah. And I'm like, huh, that doesn't look like the first sock. So I ripped it all, all the, the way, way back, back, including all the ripping the heel flap all the way out to ripped it all the way back up to the leg. That was stressful for you. It was. And <sighs> you know, know, I can tell how much you ripped because this is all I'm wrapped. still, I'm still on the stuff that I ripped, but you know what? I'm so happy. Yeah. My sock, my heels are going to look the same. It looks so much better. Oh my God. It was a train wreck. It was a train wreck. It, <laughs> but look how, again, I'm going to point out, look how much you learned. Yeah between ripping out for the shawl or the going back for the shawl and dropping stitches and then ripping this back, I'm not as afraid anymore. And I really, Because really I remember, Jill, the night you ripped that out, I want to say this to the viewers, the night that you tore that out, you and I were talking and you were pretty, you had a little trepidation about doing that because you were under the impression that when you pull stitches that they just miraculously fall away and become flat. You, you didn't understand that wool particularly has memory. So when you pull those stitches, the loop stays like a loop and enables you to pick up those loops. Like I think in your mind, you thought that they would just melt into a puddle and disappear. Like but if you touch them like quicksand, it was going to go whoop, right, and then the right. stitches would be gone. You'd have to go further and further. Right. But in, in fact, they have some memory and they stay put. And as, as long as you don't pull on things and you're careful, mm -hmm. you are able to pick them up. And I think, yeah, I think once you, cause I remember that night and you said, Oh, they're still there. And I'm like, yes, they'll, they'll wait for you. Just take it easy. <laughs> you know, as long as you're not like yanking on it, they'll be there. Right. Now yeah. that's not necessarily the truth for cotton as much, but wool has sprung and memory. Yeah. There are definitely some tricks to that. Like picking up with a smaller needle than you were knitting with. Mm -hmm. And then tricks to make sure that all of your stitches are um, facing the right direction, oriented correctly. Yep, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Those so, are the, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Ha and so Sad Sock has turned that frown upside down. Sad Sock is now like the sock of resilience. And triumph. Triumph. Soon. Soon sad sock will be worn happily. And it'll be cold out. So I you know. To wear it. The podcast where you see me kicked back with my feet up like that, you're going to know. Right. You're They're done. Soon. Soon. Lindsay, what are you knitting? Um, Right now, I am working on... Oh, this is block five. This is block five, not six. Uh, it's pretty. Block five. Oh yeah, that's the one with the little bubbles. Mhm. Mm yeah, not my favorite. I don't like bubbles. Well, the bubbles were just written weird. Had I not watched your video, I would have thought that knit in front back, then front of next stitch meant knit front back and then knit in the front of the next stitch. Well, no, right. But but it does um, knit front back front in one stitch. Right. It does say that you're making five out of one. Meaning you're Yeah, but it was still the way it's sorry. The way it's written is confusing. I forgot. And I'll show you I'm just gonna show you my other block. It was just far away. <laughs> um so the and for viewers that this we're working on Nora's vintage Afghan. This is block four that Lindsay's holding. So that's no. block four, not blocked. That's okay. I like it. I like it. Yeah. And so, you, and then you're doing block five, which is the one with the baubles. Yes. I think there's another one somewhere with baubles. I'm not sure. Yeah, I like baubles. I, I, I've not ever knitted baubles. I like the look of baubles. I think if I were doing this again, I would change the pattern a little bit and only do the bobble every other spot where it has you do it. Because it seems like a lot of bobble. A lot of bobble. <laughs> a lot of bobble. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just knitting them as written just because. Yeah. You know, the pattern for knit along. But you, yep. yeah, there are some things like, I think it's block six where I feel like it should be symmetrical and it's not. And that annoys me slightly. Oh. However, 
I think if it's if that's one of the blocks that's turned, like it makes a difference how it's oriented with yeah. it the other the whole piece, you know, whether it's turned or vertical or I don't know. It might be fine. Um, that's really all I'm working on. I've kind of decided that I'm gonna break the knit along rules and try to knit this afghan and have it done by January. That's fine. There's no rules. You're the boss. No, I know. I'm just saying like You're not knitting along. I always think of that one time that you posted in the group, it's a knit along, not a knit ahead. So that makes me feel like if I had any questions, I couldn't ask them. And that makes me feel <laughs> scared, but I'll just ask Val because she's that. So. But you're special. Thanks. You're welcome. My blood sugar, sorry. Right. So. That's so funny. So why January? Just because you want to have it done before the baby? Yeah, because I don't think I'll finish it after that. You might. They're small enough to take along, you know. But I don't take it along because I need my iPad. I thought you were talking about the, the baby. baby. <laughs> well, they're small enough to take along, too. Yeah. Until they're big enough to walk along. <sighs> and then I also have my blocked. Oh, my gosh. Cozy winter that I don't know how to wear, so I'll just show it to you. So we'll figure it out, but it's pretty. It's lovely. Do you want to? It's so pretty. I you could get one of those shawl cuffs like we talked about or yeah. do it like, wear it like Jill did, you know? We'll see. I don't usually wear things that way. I feel like they get in my way. Or, you know, the pointy big triangle part. Like That's probably how I'll do it, like in the picture. But right now it's just kind of sitting because it's hot. August makes me think of um, Janet's felt them puppies. Felted, time felt them puppies. It's never too early to think about Christmas knitting. Yeah. Okay, for viewers, they're referring to when I said something about felting your slippers and puppies. in the tutorial, and I was standing in front of my washer, and we were about to throw it in and start felting those puppies. Yep. Yay! Who are those for? A the, child, it looks like. These are these are for a friend who wears such tiny shoes. I'm so thankful. It is so easy to knit these for people that have tiny feet. You're knitting a women's size small in the felted clocks? Okay. I am, and I will tell you, I cannot roll the cuff without your video. It was hilarious. I had to have it on again. <laughs> and the best thing about these, I'm so excited. When I've started making them, I'm making them with the same color base, like no matter what color I do for the top. And so I have all of these teeny tiny balls of, of, of yarn. And I've already used up two of them this size. Yay. That was fantastic. I didn't have to buy any yarn any at yarn, all. Yeah. None. That's awesome. It's like the cleanup pair. I love that. It is because I, and I, I just always use the same base color. Yes. Yeah. And then you get to clean up all your tidbits. One time I did that and I just, I just made the most ridiculous stripe, crazy mishmash. I mean, they didn't even match. That's like, funny. But it was a stash buster. Yeah. Stash. I mean, like, they're just for me. Like, I don't care. They were warm and yeah. Yeah, just fun. We did, we did that one time and we made a crazy colorful uh, felted cat bed. Oh. Yeah, the kitty pie and it's a, it's a circle and the edges are like, once you felt it and it's done, the edges are maybe four or five inches tall and it ends up being like a great big kitty bowl. Yeah. It looks like a big kitty pie plate. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. And then we have one cat that started eating the wool. She's weird. I know. She like tore it up. She was chewing on it. It, it kind of became a mess. But we did that with our scraps one time too. Did you have a pattern for that? Yeah, it's called the kitty pie. P-I. What else do you have going on there? I just oh. have plans. My local yarn shop is going to start a knit along. Oh. So I know. What are they doing? Oh, oh, you told me that. Fading. Oh, oh hey, Locatelli. Yeah, maybe I should do that with the yarn I bought. Oh, yes, you should. That I didn't oh. show you yet. Yeah. How many yards is that? A lot. Let me see if I have enough. <laughs> I'm, she's knitting all the things that I want to knit. Well, no, I just... 
trying to get ready for tonight, I just brought three patterns. And so instead of showing them on my phone, I printed them out. So I brought the other one. That yarn that I brought back from Chicago, mm -hmm. that's what I want to do with that. She's, yes. She, she saw this one. Beach Days. Okay. By who? Raise Tracy, the hair. From Grocery Girls. From oh, Grocery Tracy Girls. Miller. Right. Yeah. So that's what I bought from the, that I'm thinking for the yarn I brought back from Chicago and, um, fading point, fading, fading point. I had originally thought about my glacier yarn, but then it's my local yarn store that's doing it. So wow. I can't bring that yarn to do that. So oh. I'll have to. So how many yards does fading point require? I mean, I could go look it up, but I just want you to tell me. <laughs> Five skeins of fingering yarn in five different colors. You need approximately 400 yards each of all five colors. So 2,000 yards. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, and the, I, I know I'm going to learn some really interesting techniques because you can knit it two, because you, you can knit it, they said you can either do one and then the other or you can knit them at the same time because it knits like in a triangle going this way. And then you knit this part because you have to pick up stitches. Mm -hmm. So you pick it up or you graft? I don't know. Oh, okay. I will have to read and find out. Hmm. So that's, wow. I might like that. I might. I like that one. Yeah. So I have a lot of really fun things I'm looking You're forward to. Pink. I'm going to have to put that in my queue, like right now. Yeah. I'm just saying. So, so that's it. That's all I got. That's, that's plenty. That's a lot. That's cool. Wow. All right. 2000. Yeah, I don't have enough. But I bet I will have something in my stash that I could mash in there and make it work. Mm -hmm. And it fades too. I just love all those things. Oh, I am. I am so excited. So this, for that one, I think I will actually, and for the second Avenue, I think I will um, get colored pencils out. Yes. The design and do it on colored pencils yeah. just to make sure that everything is where I want, where it, want it to it. be. Plan it. Yep. Plan it out. Sure. Makes perfect sense. Yes. So I was playing I was playing with some colors the local yarn store is getting a, a new shipment in and so I was looking online to try to put mm -hmm. some colors together you know what yarn you're going to use for it I mean not the yeah. colors but like what brand you're going to choose yes it is is it knit in color smooshy oh dream in color, dream in dream color smooshy. yeah oh that's good yeah yeah, yeah. No, this is fiber seed. Okay. This is fiber seed. Dream in color is oh, what some of the other one that you have. Is that? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's what some of the ladies are doing. Oh, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's it. Okay. However, oh, it has pretty. that hot pink in it. Some grays and browns. Kind of looks like ice cream with some berry swirls. Yes. It looks like well, something with jam swirled in. Yes, there you go. So that's because I'm a pink girl, so that's one of the color Ooh, palettes. Oh, you should do that. So I was I was just putting together some color palettes. Mm, I like the hot pink better. Yeah. So I was just putting different ones together. Awesome. So we'll see. Cool. So that one I just showed you was one of the ones I bought last oh, week. Oh, in Ogden? Oh. What else did you get? Yes. You show. I will, but I'm trying to put it in the right order, and now I can't. <laughs> I have to look at my phone. Okay, so I'm at my sister's. She's much better at these things than I am. And so I actually, I am only a little bit embarrassed to say that I had to take a picture, and now I'm looking at the picture of the order in which she put them because I forget. <laughs> so I'm trying to remember how she ordered it, and she said, do it like this. So it's not really... I guess I don't think it's really a fade. Oh, pretty. Oh. That's pretty. That's so pretty. I'm a little unsure about that pinkishness there, but there's, mm -hmm. so, there's so little of it. Do you mm -hmm. see the sparkles? Oh, oh my goodness. 
This, okay, wait, this, this one, the one that says Greenwood, and the one on the end here that also says Greenwood has, like, some speckles, some sparkles. Oh, pretty. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a cute oh. little label. So this will be, I'm unsure about the speckles, but we'll see. I think it'll be cute. Is that an indie dyer with the Greenwood label? Yes. Uh, greenwoodfiberworks.com. This is a hand dye company, and they are, I don't know where from exactly. This one is called Gold Dust Fingering Weight Superwash Merino Wool, 20% nylon, 75% superwash merino, and 5% Stellina, which is, makes this the bling, I guess. The sparkly. Cute. Ooh, I like it. I like that little label. And then the smooshy. And then this one is Dream and Color Two Ply BFL Cashmere Silk. Oh, that's a Which, but truthfully, see, I I have some other stuff in my sash, and I am I'm not sure yet whether this is how it's gonna be or not. Now I originally bought this for Andrew Mowry's Find Your Fate. Mm -hmm. And I might, but it's not really a fade, but I might do it anyway. I, I don't know. So talk to me it's about nice. in a shawl, in a fingering weight shawl or something like that, about mixing bases. Because I'm the boss. <laughs> and here's the thing. Three of the four of those skeins are super wash. Although, are you really going to put a shawl that you've hand knitted into the washing machine? I would not. I don't know yet quite what I'm going to do with all that. Oh, guess what else? Okay, this... It's your color, Lindsay. Yeah, it is. Okay, this is a very rustic yarn. It feels a little crispy. It feels a little, but it blooms and it, you know, it, it blocks and, and washes. Not, well, I mean, hand wash because yeah. this is 100% pure virgin wool. And this is roughly sport weight. So this is going to be the kilt, the cabled mitts for our class. Oh, pretty. Yes. Maybe. I think. <laughs> so that's, but this is called Flywheel, Flywheel, Harrisville Designs, American Spun. Yeah, Flywheel is pretty. a fantastic brand. Okay, then the other one I got was also sport weight. This is for a different project. Oh, Wonderland Yards. This is the Mad Hatter. The Wonderland Yards was also what I made my Inara wrap out of. And that was the Cheshire Cat collection. Anyway, this is from Hand Dyed by Frab Just Fibers in Vermont. Oh, cool. So this is a sport weight, 100% superwash merino, very tightly spun. So it has really nice stitch definition. Nice. So I'm thinking for the cabled mitts that we're going to make at the retreat, that I might do, you know, a, I'm going to do a pair ahead of time so you'll have a sample to look at and then one that I'll have in progress for teaching. And then there was this fantastic woman who works at the store in addition to the gal I met with. Mm -hmm. And not only does she work at Needlepoint Joint in Ogden, but she is also a hand dyer. And just, oh, a, cool. shout out, just a shout out to her, I believe, if I recall, her name was Brittany. I hope. My apologies if that's wrong. The one string dot com. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm, purple and pink. Oh, this is called Charm Hurl Ahead. Tell her to stick one back. Yeah. 90% super wash Targi wool, 10% nylon. Targi is a breed of sheep, if you didn't know that. You know, like Merino or BFL Blue Borderface Lester. Different breeds. What, you, what is that color named? Oh, it's named 17 Flower Petals. Pretty. I like it. Hand dyed in Leighton, Utah. Yay. I hope I remember her name. My apologies if I got that wrong. I did not write it down. Should have written it down. Oh, here's something I have to have done by Thursday. Well, maybe. Oh, Friday. Did you just start it? Uh huh. This afternoon. Yeah. Today. I'm going to a retreat with a bunch of women this weekend, and it's one of those things where you, you need to you bring something 
that's representative of you. And so of course I'm going to knit something, right? Mm -hmm. And I did this last year. And so it's just a beanie. Oh, oh it's cute. Yeah. These are pretend cables. They're not real cables. Okay. They're faux cables. So, and before anybody asks, it's just, I just made up the pattern on the fly. I've done this pattern before. Don't raise your eyebrow at me, Missy. Here's what it is. It's, <laughs> it's a 10 stitch repeat. And what I've done here is the faux cable is just across a panel of four. And then I've got two pearls, you know, knit two, pearl two, knit two, in between the panel of four of my faux cable things. So it's a 10 stitch repeat. So I cast on a hundred because it's like sport weight. Yeah. And it's super stretchy. And because I don't know the size of the person, it's just going to be a kind of medium-ish adult size. And I, I think that'll work. Yeah, it will. Such a dork. Right. Well, no, I think, you know, I think pictures of people trying to try on things while they're still on the needles are hilarious. Me trying to get these socks on without, yeah. Yes. You could, and the thing is, that's one thing I had to do with one of the sweaters, or I had a shawl that I wanted to see. Is this really going to be big enough? Because, you know, your cable's only thing you have it all mashed on there. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know if I had enough yarn, and I wanted to know if it was truly big enough. So what I did was took a darning needle and a whole bunch of cotton waste yarn, threaded it all through there, took it off the needle, and then I actually put it on. That's the smart way. You don't look as silly. Well, clearly, I don't care if I look silly because I just did that. <laughs> oh, I remember yeah. trying to manage the, the manage the cozy winter when I was getting to the end to see if it was big enough and I still had a little bit on the needles and you're trying to flip it around you, but put it out just enough so you could kind of see if it was wide enough, but not oh. enough so it would flip off the needles. Are you baby knitting or are you knowing full well that the rest of us are? Um, I was... I will be baby knitting now a little bit. I'm not going to share what I'll be baby knitting now because. That's okay. Yeah. It could be a surprise. Yeah. My guess is nobody else would be sharing their baby knitting either. Right. <laughs> well, I might. We'll see. Or she can share it when she gets it. Yes. See yes. what I mean? I probably won't share it publicly before Lindsay gets it. There you go. But, and if she doesn't want to, that's fine too. If you want to just keep it secret. So when you're done, Jill, when, when you're done with your socks, and I know that you're making those felted clocks, clogs, mm -hmm. what's next on your, you're going to start one of those shawls to bring to the retreat or not? Or you're going to be doing, what's next on your list of knitting? It will probably be the fading point shawl because that is a knit along that my local yarn shop yeah. is starting mid August. And I think that will be a, a feat for me. Of, I mean, that'll take a little bit of time and investment. Yeah. So I have that. I do. Well, you want know, to... I mean, if you think about it, we're only six weeks out from the retreat. Yeah. That's not going to be done by then. That's okay. Just bring it. Cause I'm going to want to see it. That'll be fun. I'll, I'll learn a lot of new things I'm thinking and yeah. so and that's going to be working on it. You're going to be working on your blocks. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be kind of monogamous with that for a while? Yeah, I think so. I was watching an, a, an interview with Andrea Mowry last really? night where she talked about um, knitting while nursing. <laughs> <laughs> about how to arrange everything just so That's so she funny. could still knit while she nursed. Was this on a podcast? That made me funny. Um, yes. I want to send me the link. So it, it was actually this this woman named Christy Glass. So yeah. I watched Andrea Mowry last night, and I watched Casapinka, who is an ER doctor. Wow. She's a doctor. She's a doctor. Yeah. yeah. Well. You know, people have real yeah. professions. <laughs> it's so neat to see how all the influences outside of 
the influences in people's lives are then um, represented within their knitting. Yeah. Yeah, with designers for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. They're just regular knitters. And they're just regular people. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So we were talking about that. I was talking about that with uh, Rebecca from Needlepoint Joint when we were having lunch. And she, she was talking about knitters that are designers that she's met. They're very well known, like Ann Budd, Nancy Bush, you know, very well known. And Stephanie Pearl McPhee, all these people that she's met. And she's like, you know, totally starstruck on, but then you visit with, I mean, they're just, they're regular people, just like, they're just knitters like the rest of us, you know? Right. Yeah. Everybody just is a regular knitter, just like everybody started out the same way. And, you know, any new TV knitting, any new series we should know about that? Anything new we should know about? No. No. I listen, oh, well, see, I've been watching shows about Alaska because I like to watch shows about winter when I'm hot in the summer. It makes me feel cooler. <laughs> I know. So I was watching, I watched this show called The Last Alaskans, and it's called that because in the Arctic National Refuge, which the whole na wildlife refuge, Arctic, that's what it's called, Arctic National Refuge, that's hard for me to say, is about the size of the entire state of South Carolina. It's huge. And since the 80s, the Forest Service does not any longer issue cabin permits and so there's only a handful of families like less than 10 oh, wow. that still have cabins in the wildlife refuge and when their children are dead and gone there won't be anybody left those permits are only valid until the death of the youngest child of the family it was issued to so in a hundred years there will be nobody up there oh wow but so I was, so I'm watching this, it's basically a reality TV show, but I'm, you know, about how, well, how they, it's how they live and you get to know the families and they're building their cabins and they're running their trap lines and they're shooting moose for the winter and yeah. you know, the whole subsistence, you know, where they have to put up their fish wheels and catch enough salmon for their sled dogs all winter long. And so it's, it's, I find it fascinating, but I like things like that i have because you know i'm i'm a non-fiction yes. person so i'm reading right now um it's called extreme ownership how u.s navy seals lead and win it's an older one but it's been on my list for a while so that was there was a on the new york times bestseller list for a while cool and then I'm still reading a little bit of Stephanie Pearl McPhee casts off and just, um, she's little. hilarious. She's so funny. So funny. I have several of her books. Well, here's, Oh, haha. -ha. Yes. So funny. Yep. That's what I'm listening to. So. But she's one of these people that's so relatable and she's just like you and me and you feel like you know her. Mm -hmm. you know, I think she's just super grounded and down to earth. I love her so much. I would love to meet her one day because she is one of my earliest knitting celebrity crushes. Aww. I know, fangirl over Stephanie. Yeah. yeah, I would love to knit her. I started reading her blog probably 11, 12 years ago. Yeah. So she's so funny. And her writing's hilarious. Her blog is absolutely hilarious. So it's neat. I love and and this is what I found with your channel too. There's something there for everybody. So if you're new to knitting and you're just um you're just exploring and starting out, or if you've been knitting for decades, there's a piece in there for you. There's a place at the table for you. Right. Oh, and I hope that's true. You know, we were talking about the retreat in that way. And like the cable class, for example, like Lindsay's done that fantastic wash or that dishcloth, you know, with all the cables, that was the Saxon braid, I believe that you showed several mm -hmm. episodes ago. So it's not as if the cable class, like I'm not going to teach you anything you don't already know. <laughs> She's yawning. Exactly. <laughs> Close to nine o'clock. I know. But everybody approaches things differently and i and that's what we were talking about with the gal at the needlepoint joint is that i do things the way i learned but and and i'm happy to share that 
but I don't know everything there is to, I never said I knew everything there was to know about everything. And so I'm excited to have 15 other knitters in the room that can show me how they do it. And, you know, while I'm going to have my agenda and my outline, so we all stay on track and sort of end on time and actually do get some sleep, people can share, you know, how maybe they do things a little differently also. <laughs> oh, poor Lindsay. We record these things in the evening and it's an hour later for them than it is for me. And you know, Lindsay's working on the ultimate whip. It's exhausting. It is. <laughs> it is. It's exhausting to make a baby. I think it's so nice that you drive there to be together for the podcast, I think. And then you get to see each other. I think that's cool. Yeah, yeah. it's nice. It's fun. It is nice. Yeah. Okay, so we'll wrap this up and just say thanks to everybody for joining us. We'll put all the links down below. Check out the registration link for the retreat if you're interested in joining us the first week in October. You'll want to sign up soon uh, because the good deal that I have through the hotel, that contracted room rate will end Monday, September 3rd. And then if you want to come to the retreat, you still could, but you're not going to get the best deal you might on the hotel room right check that out all the stuff's down below and we'll let Lindsay go to bed <laughs> yeah all right see you guys next time take care bye